Republican Florida State Senator Blaze Ingola. Uh, thank you so much for being here, Senator. We appreciate it. We know this is a busy time. Uh, let's dive right in, though. We know the brunt of these storms has passed. What are your biggest concerns as you survey this damage and then you look ahead? Hey, uh, good afternoon. Great to be with you. I guess the biggest uh, the biggest challenges here is make sure that these communities have power. They're getting back online to businesses and that critical infrastructure isn't failing. So I know that while the crews are out there getting power to restore, they are checking critical infrastructure. They're reporting back to their local uh, div uh, divisions of emergency management along with the state. And we're going to get through this. It's going to take a little while. But um, if you put it all in, into perspective, we're doing a pretty good job considering the circumstances. Back-to-back -back hurricanes, uh, especially with uh, uh, Helene with the storm surge and this with the wind and the rain, I think we're doing a good job. And uh, uh, it's a testament to all the hard work of many Floridians out there. Absolutely. So many people out there working hard and, and putting their own lives in danger as well. Uh, Senator, you know, we heard Alex talking about children returning to school potentially um, in the coming days. How realistic is that timeline? When may things get back to normal a bit? Well, I mean, it might sound weird, but a lot of the communities in the state of Florida are already getting back to normal. Now, there are some hard hit communities that are without power and it's a race to get power back. But to answer your original question in terms of uh, getting back to school, you know, there is the opportunity for some uh, remote learning. It's unfortunate there are probably going to be some children that don't make it back uh, and they're going to have to play catch up. But look, the state is ready. The governor is ready. Whatever our constituents need to do, heck, I will drive kids kids to school myself if I have to, because it's that important. We're going to get this back. Um, we are resilient. This is not our first rodeo. We're going to make it happen. Well, and it's that spirit that will get everyone back. You know, we're hearing a lot as well about fatigue when it comes to these crews, and we're seeing these conditions play out uh, before our eyes. They're working around the clock on these rescue efforts. How are resources being allocated to avoid burnout when you have so many areas that still need significant help? I think by the sheer magnitude of the relief effort when it comes to the governor mobilizing state guard, fish and wildlife, uh, national guard, uh, communities, uh, community leaders, there's a lot of people pitching in um, in a lot of different ways. And the sheer number allows at least some of them to uh, cycle on and then cycle off. I mean, I know that some of them personally, they're working, you know, 18 hour days, grabbing five hours of sleep, and then they're going back. Um, so I hate to say that they're used to it at this point in the state of Florida, but um, it's the strength and the resilience of, of the people of the state of Florida that allows the state to remain strong and resilient. You know, you really can't emphasize that enough. Uh, we've got this banner up. Florida hit with two hurricanes in two weeks. This really was a bit of a one-two punch with Helene and then Milton, not to mention the tornadoes that spun up out of all of this. How has this, you know, one-two punch, so to speak, complicated these cleanup efforts that we can continue to see play out uh, at this hour? I guess the biggest complication was the cleanup efforts that were underway after Helene. Helene uh, showed an amazing amount of storm surge. My district got hit very, very hard. Pasco, Hernando, Citrus Coastal communities, storm surge anywhere between five to seven feet. So there was a lot of damage, and all that damage was moved to the curb. So there was a race to get this to the landfills because we did not want to see that as projectiles with the Cat 5 uh Cat 5 hurricane bearing down on us. But um, when Milton hit, Milton hit the opposite side of the county. So it was a lot of um, in the, the, the wind field of the storm that produced a lot of debris, a lot of downed power lines, a lot of downed trees, and um, a lot of blocked roads. So um, it's, it was a different type of hurricane, and the challenges for each were a little bit different. But the biggest challenge, to answer your question, was the race to prepare for uh, and Milton, and I think we did a really good job, especially, especially that this was a slow moving storm that we had about five to six days heads up and a lot of people thankfully um, evacuated to the northern part of the state, probably saved a lot of lives. Right. And those critical hours in between uh, were very important, as you outlined. We have about 30 seconds left. What is your message to your constituents now? What do you want them to hear? 
My message is this, it's an all hands on deck type of situation. We need everyone. We have government chipping in. Um, we are constantly reaching out state government, federal government, community leaders can do that. You can help by spreading information. Um, if somebody needs information or help, they can call 833-GET-HOPE if they would like to uh, contribute. They can text text disaster to 20222 and contribute to the ongoing efforts. It's gonna take a while, but we're gonna get it done. Florida is gonna be back on the map here soon. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your screen. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.